Hi, it's Dr. T again. I'm back at CVS for the cheap and cheerful skincare routine. I've had so many requests for this uh, by other people who saw my high-end skincare and makeup recommendations when I went to Saks. This was like over a year ago, and I've had many requests to do the cheap and cheerful one. So here I am, CVS in Georgetown, on a Friday afternoon. So we're going to start with cleansers first. And what I just found around the corner, it took me a while, were these big cotton pads and I tell my patients that they don't already have one of those Clarisonic cleansing brushes that this is my second choice because these things will take off makeup you only have to use one rather than two and we use it with a cream cleanser speaking of cream cleansers here are my favorite ones come this way I lined them up here CVS is probably gonna fire me because I end up doing all these things they're gonna kick me out um, Cerave a good hydrating cleanser Dove, I love Dove skin, sensitive skin. Even though this says this is a body wash, you can use this on the face. It's a nice cream cleanser. It will cl clean off your makeup. You can use it in the shower with your cleansing brush. You can use a cleansing bar, but I really prefer the um, the, the liquid cleansers. Cetaphil, of course, is an old time favorite. I don't like this as much as other dermatologists. Other dermatologists love it. It's like my distant like fifth. Uh, I much prefer Dove and I like Cerave. Um, of course, I have some fancier ones available at my office, but they'll cost you more money. Okay, so, oh, I talked to you about power brushes or sonic brushes. If you can't afford the sonic hair brush, which really is the Cadillac model of the cleansing brush world, these inexpensive CVS ones aren't bad. They just tend to kind of rotate around rather than suck the skin, the, the, the dirt out, but it's not a bad way to get started. And if you're really in a bind, say you're on a long flight, you're not, you don't have any water available, you can use these um, towelettes. They come in a variety of shapes and sizes from different companies. This one I like from Neutrogena because it has the fewest chemicals in it. Uh, definitely get one for sensitive skin. What I do is I like the ones that are dry, that are put out by Dove. I can't find them here. Uh, but you can wet them with regular water has a very nice soft nap and use that to remove the dirt and makeup from the day so again I much prefer you use um, a cream cleanser liquid cleanser use it either on a Sonicare brush or these pads if you're really in a pinch you can get some pre moistened towelettes um, even when they're pre moistened I tend to wash them off with water and just use the nap in and of itself just to avoid any sensitivity or irritation from the chemicals okay let's stop there and I'll take you on to the next set Okay, so what's the next step in the uh, daily routine after you cleanse your face in the shower uh, using hopefully one of those Sonicare brushes? I tell people if you're not going to use one of these topical vitamin C or retinols that I'm going to tell you about in a little bit, is at least get some BB cream. Well, what is BB cream? BB is Beauty Balm, and it typically contains a little bit of a moisturizer, sometimes an antioxidant, but always a tint and an SPF. So it's a, a combination Beauty Balm. And there are a couple of inexpensive ones here. I just located one here somewhere. Here it is, the Garnier BB Cream. It has a broad spectrum SPF of 15. It's nice that they even have a higher one, and there are ones that you can find with an SPF 30, which I think is particularly helpful in the summertime. Um, there's a another one here this is only like 1349 not bad at all but if you move on down here a little bit more expensive at 1999 um, are Neutrogena they have them in a couple of colors which is helpful one fair to light and the other one light to medium to compensate for different people's skin types again this is one-stop shopping you have your moisturizer you have your SPF you have your tint and sometimes even a little bit of antioxidant so after you clean your face this is a nice thing to put on every day Speaking of BB creams, it brings me to the sun protection, sun care section. And there are some sunscreens that add tint to them, like this La Roche-Posay Mineral Ant Helios, which I love. It's sort of like their version of a BB cream because it has an SPF 50 with a very nice tint. In fact, in the summertime, I end up using this not only as a sunscreen, but I use it as my daily, um, uh, what I want to say, foundation. So I like this very much because it matches my skin. For those of you who have different skin tones who don't want to put on a tint for the guys out there, you might want to use one of these other non-tinted mineral SPFs. Love this, love this, love this. Now, for a less less expensive version, um, you can take it down a notch. Here you have a whole bunch of Neutrogena products and they're all really good. People really like the dry um, touch sunscreen, whether it's in a tube or in a mist. The problem with using any of this 
sprays is the fact that you have to rub it in. It's You can't just spray it on or walk through the mist and think that you're protected. You have to spray it and then rub it in. And it's better to do this at least 10, if not 15 minutes prior to going outside. Um, and to reapply it every two hours if you're outside or otherwise coming out of the pool. So you need to be well protected there. Now I just discovered that Neutrogena actually has a baby and child section, which I think is great. I love these sticks um, very much. This is again a non-chemical sunblock. Very good. It stays in place. You don't have to spray it. You don't have to rub in lotion. This is just one of these sticks you can put on the nose or the cheeks. Very safe in babies. It's also cute baby pink. Um, and uh, what else do we have here? They used to have wipes um, that had sunblock on them, but they've fallen out of favor. So if you're going to do anything other than the cream to the sticks and you're using the spray, just remember that you do need to rub it in. So we've washed our face, we've protected our face and body, and now how about the delicate eye area? Now remember, the eyes can't really take a lot of acids and all these active ingredients that people worry about uh, putting around their eyes because it's just too sensitive an area. So you really want to have a formulation that's uh, formulated for the eyes specifically. They tend to be a little bit thicker, have fewer ingredients if they're well done. This one is actually not bad. This Neutrogena has a little bit of retinol. retinol actually enhances new collagen formation so it's great for fine lines you still have to be careful the people with sensitive skin may still react even to these over-the-counter products another one and of course you see all these here I mean there's a ton right I can't even go through my head is spinning and I'm a dermatologist but there are some other ones as well that I think are equally nice uh, L'Oreal makes a couple of good ones they have one called miracle blur which feels really really nice on the skin um, and it has a two has a little bit of retinol and some tech, light scattering technology that makes the area look a lot more smooth. There's a couple of them here. This one helps to reduce bags, probably has a little bit of hyaluronic acid um, as well and makes the, the area around the eyes look a little bit smooth. And they have a nice little dispenser, not too expensive either. Now let's move on. Um, more and more things are coming out here. Here's one by Rock. Uh, not only does it have one or two things, it's a five in one cream. Don't ask me whether or not that does better than the things that only have one or two. I tend to only be uh, careful about the too many added ingredients. This one is nice because um, it also uh, comes in a BB form, a tinted form. So again, like it's a three for here, you can use uh, the, the uh, active ingredient, which is usually retinol, maybe a little bit of ascorbic acid, which has some vitamin C for brightening, but the BB cream acts as a coverage or foundation around your eyes. So we've talked about correcting the eye area. Now how about correcting the rest of the skin? And where does this fit into your skincare regimen? Typically, I tell people after they wash their face and before they put on their sunscreen or BB cream or even moisturizer that they put on a corrective cream. Something for redness perhaps in the morning or something for brown or, or blotchiness at night. So let's talk about some of those things. We're here at the La Roche Posay Center at CBS and I've just found Found this Rosiliac CC cream. Now this is interesting. We talked about BB cream. Now we're talking CC cream. CC is correction cream. And you know what? It's almost the same as BB cream. You still have a little bit of tint. You have a little bit of corrective measure. Sometimes it's an antioxidant. In this case, they're going after redness. Don't ask me what the active ingredient is in here, except that it also contains sunscreen. So this is very interesting. You have your CC cream and your BB cream. Um, other things that you can use to in, in improve the appearance of the skin here and I noticed is Melody. Now this one is a foaming uh, moisturizing um, thing but this is what you should use at night. Either this one or this one. They both contain a little bit of kojic acid which helps to uh, lighten up dark spots. Now again nothing like my lasers at work. This is something that's helpful over the counter not too expensive that will lighten your skin up and I would tell people to use this at night. So just to sum everything up. We went through cleansers, we went through BB creams for protection during the day, we went through eye care, um, upper and lower end, but really what, what is this all about? You know, I tell people that 
that it's best to protect during the day and repair at night. And when I say protect during the day, I don't just mean sunscreen or BB cream. I typically also add a little bit of vitamin C to the equation. And here's one that's not too expensive. It's usually about $25, which is a fraction of the price of the higher end ones that are available through doctor's offices or at higher end establishments. But this one does a very nice job, this act. On the other hand, in the evening, we like to repair the skin. And I mentioned the fact that if you have any pigment irregularities or blotchiness, that you want to use a skin lightener or brightener. On the other hand, if you just want to try to stimulate new collagen production to minimize wrinkles or scarring, you can use something that has a little bit of retinol in it. Um, and these are two good products. Again, about $25 a piece, very reasonable. You put this on at night to repair the skin. So protect during the day, repair at night. So you really can find inexpensive products that do really well for your skin here at CVS or another pharmacy. In fact, I have a basket full over there of many of the things that we just discussed. I'm gonna take them home and try them out, just not on me, but on my husband and my son. Uh, I hope that you like this video and that you get to follow me, um, Dr. Tina Alster. I'm on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all the social media sites. I hope to see you again soon.